I am the Communication and Gender Officer for the Savannah Women Integrated Development Agency, SWIDA Ghana, and I double as the lead under the CASA Initiative. So for the CASA Initiative, there's focus on three areas, prevention, accountability, and support. And so what we've been doing under the project is first and foremost to work with female advocates from tertiary institutions and one we're building them in advocacy skills to be able to understand what sexual and gender-based violence really is and from there we want them to be able to talk about how this is a serious issue and the roles they have to play as well as stakeholders in the communities have to play and an important thing we've been doing in this regard is to let them understand the systems that are in the universities for them to be able to talk about sexual and gender-based violence. So sexual harassment policies, for example, um, appropriate departments or offices where they can go to, to talk about abuses if they have. Another important thing we've been doing is trying to really highlight the importance of providing psychosocial support to victims because we've realized that this is a conversation that does not happen. So we've been working together with a trained psychologist who meets these young ladies occasionally to let them understand that when they talk about sexual and gender-based violence it's not just about talking about the problems and the solutions but letting people understand that there's the need to provide psychosocial support to victims because they need to have a life after trauma successes i'm going to highlight is having been able to provide legal and psychosocial support to a family um, who was actually referred to us by one of our advocates we had been training. That made us very happy because that meant that they had taken what we were giving them and using that to ensure that there's justice sought for, for victims. So this was a defilement case. Um, the family had given up because there was a lot of pressure to drop the case as usual. But we came in to support the family working together with the Ghana Education Service Department of Gender, Ghana Health Service. But most significant for us was to ensure that we would get both mother and the survivor um, access to support. As at the time we were following the case, the mother was nursing and, and she lost her baby. So we saw it's necessary to give her attention. We, we connected her to our um, psychologist we've been working with. And then we also made it a point to get the survivor back to school because as a result of what she had gone through she faced stigma and she left school we worked with the ghana education service to take her back to school she's currently doing well her favorite subject is maths a key challenge we've been facing when it comes to talking about um, sexual and gender-based violence it's a bit conservative and so trying to talk about the whole concept which some people see as a family conversation. We don't talk about sexual violence outside. It's supposed to be solved at home. Trying to bring these issues out, you, you appear to look like someone who's trying to break families. You want to break the peace in communities. And most of all, people feel that you are toning down the triggers. Someone will say, why are you talking about when we should be asking the question of what was she wearing? What was she doing there? Operating in a space like that, you, you, you are forced to, to come up with creative ways of still driving home your point, which we have done through a radio drama program we came up with to be able to, you know, bring out so that it, it tones down how someone would receive the advocacy message. Another challenge has been funding. And this is because when we began the project, we're very strategic in working with tertiary institutions. Um, but we decided to carry the conversation that we went to visit secondary schools. And any time we went, we would have the school counselors and administration saying, you need to have these conversations here. Abuse is going on in the schools. It's going on on levels of student to student, teacher to students. So we need to have these conversations. Then we go to communities where we implement other projects. You talk about entrepreneurship, you're talking about climate change, you bring in a little bit of GBV, you're walking home, someone approaches you and says, look, you guys need to come back and talk about this. You need to have a community endeavor about this. This is happening in our community. But we only have enough to do very little. The challenge is funding. 
we're looking for creative ways to go about how we can do the advocacy, but we believe that um, with adequate funding, we should be able to continue to carry this message across until every young girl's life is safe.